Yo. Oh, I'm on my break again, and I said I'm going to do a Bible study today, so i got this little bag that I carry this little Bible in. So, when I've recorded on Spreaker, this is what I've done, and yeah, I need to shave and I need a haircut really bad. It's terrible, but I see myself, so I'm not going to eat or snack, drink anything besides water for this break. Except for I will have this bread. <laughs> this bread right here. It's King James Bible. Somebody donated to me. It's awesome. Um, I think it's from the church Bible publishers. It's like some kind of cowhide or something. It's really nice. Really tiny print. But uh, I think I was on Proverbs 29. So... Yeah, I want to say that, talk about Tyler Baker. Tyler Baker is the guy that was a part of uh, Stephen Anderson's church, Faithful Word Baptist Church, and then he left because he believed in a oneness theology. He doesn't believe in the uh, three persons in the Godhead. He doesn't believe in the Trinity. And um, he believes a lot of weird stuff, so he made a video recently trying to explain his beliefs on the Trinity, or how he believes about Jesus, and he said that he believed that uh, when Jesus died, that God died, and he said it wasn't just his humanity, but it was actually God that died. So he's actually saying that God died in his deity, which is heresy, uh, it's a major slight on the attributes of God because God is life. God is eternal life. God can't die. And so, um, I can see how people who deny the Trinity may have issues with that, with uh, the death of Jesus, because they have issues with the person of Jesus. They don't understand the difference between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so when they, when somebody asks them, maybe explain how, you know, what happened when, when Jesus died and, uh, you know, how, how, how could Jesus be God and yet he died? And, uh, instead of explaining, you know, that Jesus was fully human and fully divine and he died in his humanity, just, they're just, He's just saying that uh, altogether that just God died. Okay. Anyways, he's wrong, and it's really bizarre, and I called him out about it in the comments. So, that was one of his most recent videos, but I'm going to read from Proverbs chapter 29. So, that's what we're... Proverbs 29, because I'm pretty sure that I... Yeah, I read 28 last, so... Proverbs 29 says, He that being often reproved, he that being often reproved, harden his neck, harden his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. And, um, okay. So somebody who is often corrected, they need correction all the time. And, Sorry, I lost my connection there for a little bit. I don't know how the connection's going to be, but I'm also installing some apps that I wanted to download since my phone's new and I'm still trying to get everything on there that I feel like I need. So so basically, you know, when you get reproof or correction, you're supposed to heed to it. Even if it's not always the easiest thing, you need to take it into consideration. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So you don't want to have a wicked leader. That makes sense, right? But yeah, I'm just thinking again, the whole heeding to correction thing. You know, it happens at work all the time. And I'm not perfect, but you know, if I get corrected by a supervisor or something, you know, then okay, and if if my thought process was different or something else different happened or somebody told me different or whatever, you know, I'll state my case, 
but generally, you know, you're the boss, I'm the employee, I'm supposed to heed to correction, but that's not the case for everybody. That's not even the case for everybody with law enforcement. We see that all the time. And, you know, that's a great example, you know. <laughs> uh, being reproved and stiff in your neck, uh, suddenly destroyed. How about people that don't heed to the police officers to stay in their car or whatever, and then they end up getting shot and killed? Well, that's a result of their actions. Uh, so... You know, we, uh, you need to learn to be humble and to take correction sometimes. Try not to always be a hothead and blow up on somebody who says, hey, you know, you need to be doing this differently, you know. Anyway, whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Interesting. So, basically, if you love wisdom and righteousness, then you make your parents happy. But he that keep, keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. And so, it could be talking about kind of like... You know, if your parents see you doing that wisely, uh, investing or whatever, you know, spending it in good ways or, or keeping it or whatever and you know the other hand of that is to be careless about you know your inheritance or whatever and um, so the king by judgment establisheth the land but he that receiveth gifts overthrows it overthroweth it the king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. I don't know what it means that he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. I know what overthrows it means. So... I think it could mean like a king uh, by judgment. So by being righteous, you know, like a righteous judge, he keeps the land by making the right judgments and everything. But on the other hand, the person who receives gifts is, you know, in some ways I think it could be like somebody who's bribed, like a king who isn't just, who isn't making just judgments but uh, he's more selfish, he wants uh, just more things in his favor, doesn't care about everything else, um, he would overthrow the land because of his carelessness, again, basically. That's kind of what I'm thinking. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. So, does that spread the net for his own feet or for the neighbor's feet? Kind of, you would think both. But I think maybe he's talking about the neighbor's feet. Um, you know. Speaks of flattery a lot of times in like a negative way. Like, it could be good to flatter somebody, I guess, in a way. as like a compliment or, you know. But a lot of ways, a lot of times in Scripture, I think it's talking about kind of like a deceptive flattering um used just to to deceive somebody in the transgression of an evil man there is a snare but the righteous doth sing and rejoice and so does that mean that the evil man you know the transgression is a, sn a snare set for other people or for the evil man himself. It seems kind of like a snare for himself. Again, how the end of the wicked is destruction and the end of the righteous is to sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. 
the righteous care for the poor. That's pretty self-explanatory. The wicked are completely selfish people, not to people of a lower degree, quote unquote. <laughs> but what is the next word? Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but a wise man turn away wrath. But wise men turn away wrath, sorry. Scornful men bring a city into a snare. So it's not good to be scornful. You know, which is basically like anger, I guess, anger and hatred. Uh, angry men bring the city into trouble. But wise men turn away anger, basically. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. So, you know, if you're debating with a fool <laughs> and either they could get pissed off at you or they could laugh at you, but either way, it's not a good idea. Let the fools be fools. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. so I wonder what does it mean seek his soul that they seek other upright people um, that they seek they seek within their own soul they seek God I think basically it means seeking the upright I don't know a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Again, somebody who just will blow up after correction and uh, go off, you know. There can be lots of thoughts in everybody's heads about words that we want to say to somebody. <laughs> But, you know, it's wise to uh, keep that in and even consider it if we should even be thinking those things. You know, is this right or wrong or, you know, not always mouth off everything that we want to. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. And that kind of makes me think of going back to where it talks about basically a, a ruler receiving gifts, a ruler harking to lies. All his servants are wicked. Uh, a poor and deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. I don't really understand that. Um, I mean, I think the Lord lighteneth both their eyes means basically that God, you know, God made them both. God causes it to rain on the, the wicked and the good. We see that, you know, in another verse. Um, so I don't think that it's putting them in the same shoes as far as being their morality the king that faithfully judges the poor his throne shall be established forever the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to a shame. 
We see a lot of that today. A lot of children growing up without being corrected. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest, yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Think, you know, he shall give you rest, meaning, you know, he's going to be a good son or daughter. And you're going to be able to be at peace with, you know, their daily lives, basically. They're not going out and causing trouble, getting themselves into trouble and everything else. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I think that that's a verse I see a lot, like Anita Fuentes, or a lot of uh, Pentecostal types will use that, where there's no vision, the people perish. Uh, that's kind of just what comes to my mind. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. So is that advocating, you know, correction with the rod for the servant? <laughs> Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than him. So somebody who's quick to speak without thinking, not good. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. I don't know, that kind of just sounds like it speaks of the bond between a master and a servant um, who have been together for so long that he's basically a son at length. I mean, basically means that he's basically a son, but not genetically. <laughs> meaning somebody he can trust. Uh, an angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing, and bewrayeth it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright to the way is abomination to the wicked. It's a lot of the same self-explanatory, but, you know, I could say a lot of things about them, but I'm just trying to rush through this. So, <laughs> um, I think I just kind of want to enjoy the rest of my break, um, just sitting here. I need to look at my phone and look at some of these apps I need to get installed and all that so oh, I'm excited that I've got tomorrow off and probably going to rearrange my living room when I get home I've been thinking about that because things get on my mind so much that I get impatient and I have tomorrow off and it's like I, I could do it I have all night tomorrow to do it but it's like is that how I want to spend all my night moving everything around like what if I just push it tonight and at least kind of get my living room to where I want to do it, which is going to open it up a lot. Anyway, thank you guys for listening to Proverbs 29. I'm almost all the way through, only a couple more chapters, which I might actually finish that tomorrow. But then I'm just going to go through and look through a lot of these verses in more detail and figure out what else is going on. But in the meantime, I guess Tyler Baker is going to be teaching weird stuff, so... 
Anyway, God bless, guys. See ya.